So good morning. Uh, my name is Stuart Ridgeway. I'm standing between you and lunch, so I will make this as uh, interesting and uh, provocative as possible. Um, we're lucky here in DC. There is a fair amount of, of uh, software work for us. We're not San Francisco or New York, uh, but there are a lot of good projects for us. A lot of it is uh, commodity software upgrades doing legacy applications. And when I talk about commodities, I'm thinking like a payroll system or a case tracking system. It may not be sexy work, but it is good work. Uh, and it would, because it's not sexy, though, it doesn't necessarily have to suck. Uh, and so what I want to talk to you about all about today is ways that you can find opportunities to make it really interesting work for yourself. So how many of you are working on legacy projects now? OK, a, good, a, few, a, a few number of you. Uh, how many of you love it? Cool, about half of you, good. So modernizing is, is, is a shiny word for, for, for upgrading uh, software into the current standards. Um, because, there, because the federal government is here, obviously, because of, there are a lot of enterprise software companies here, there are a lot of legacy uh, upgrade or modernization projects, not a whole lot of greenfield ones, but that's okay. At first blush, it may actually be really exciting. Hey, who wouldn't want to uh, you know, take a shot at making this pretty beast uh, that much more modern and, and cool to, uh, to work with? But as we know, legacy <laughs> projects are not without their problems. Um, as you can imagine, if it's a 10, 15-year-old system, it's probably, probably been patched a few times. Um, there's a good chance that the code is fragmented, it's all over the place, and the functionality is, new functionality has probably been bolted on over the years. Another thing to think about is the best practices that were in place 10, 15 years ago are probably obsolete. So the way you manage data or the way you manage security and transit has evolved since then. Another thing to think about is that the application is probably a part of a larger suite of applications and they've, they've been sort of jammed together and there's a good chance that the one you're working on has not seen a lot of love in the last few years. So who likes to do rework? Who likes to cut and paste other people's logic? <laughs> Who likes to sift through the spaghetti code of new and old functionality? Who likes lift and shift? Who likes working on a project that has little impact and doesn't really improve anything? So I'm painting a bleak picture of modernization projects, but they don't have to be this way. So what if you could really find a compelling reason to dig a little deeper into the project you're working on? And what if you found the opportunities to make the project more interesting and more innovative? What if you knew something that your client didn't? What if you were the ones who could make the end users happy? And what if they were coming to you to say thank you? What I'm talking about here is bringing real value to the project. And the thing is, you have a really unique and valuable vantage point as the product and software engineers on this project. You obviously know the tech, and your client doesn't. Most likely, you are rubbing shoulders with the product owner, the business analyst, the user experience folks. And there's a good chance that you may be pulling metrics or uh, putting in code, code to pull metrics on how they're going to measure whether this project is successful or not. So you actually have a little bit of a perfect storm here. You have access to a lot of resources that no one else does. And what I'm going to talk about today is how you can pull those together to be the hero on this project. So the big question is, how? So let me break this down for you. There are four steps that I want to talk, talk about. Actually, before we do that, let's talk about just the process of the application. So the, the big modernization project that you're working on, this big application, actually is based on a business 
process. So regardless of how convoluted the software is, there's an underlying business process that's trying to be achieved here. And if you can understand that business process and how it fits into the organization, that is your first step and that is your path on being the hero on this project. And I will explain the way this works because you probably haven't thought about it this way before. So there's, there's logic here. You guys are engineers, you work with requirements or PBIs, uh, you're rational, you understand dependencies, you understand logical sequences and conclusions. Business processes are very similar here. So you have goals, you have specific conditions that you have to work under. There are influencing factors and their constraints and then there's ultimate, ultimately a logical solution. This is very similar to coding, you know? What are you, tr what's the, what's, what are you trying to drive here? What's the information that you have access to? What are the constraints of working with that information? You make an assessment, you calculate something, you put that information somewhere, and then you test it. Very similar with a business process. My point here is that you have the capacity, obviously, to understand what the business process is, you just have to make that extra step to try to pull it together for yourself. And if you understand what the business process is, then you have the foundation for thinking about how you might make it better. But we're going to be smart about it. Because you need to know what to look for. You need to know what improvements are actually going to make a difference. And you need to understand how the new functionality that you're thinking about is going to benefit the organization that you're working for. And that's the key here. Because we're not talking about ideation and solutioning just for fun, just because we have lots of cool ideas and we read the coolest blogs. Anyone has bright ideas. There's lots of them out there. The difference is recognizing when you're solving a business problem with the technology that you're working on and recognizing when you can bring value, again, to the organization that's paying the bills here. So, how do you get that insight? And there are four steps. First, we're going to learn about the client's goals and the mission of the organization. We're actually going to find out about the business problem that the application itself solves. We're going to learn how the user is dealing with the application and what, they're, what, what they go through, and then we're going to pull it all together. So let's start about talking about learning about the client's goals and the mission of the organization and why this actually matters to you. So there is a solid business reason for why the organization is doing this modernization project. They didn't just decide to, to, to throw a lot of money at it because it was built on COBOL. If it was working, it's working, right? So the, quest, the first question you have to ask is how does this application and the modernization fit into the larger organization? So it could be a performance issue. So for example, it may be a payroll system that you're working on. Okay. I have to modernize this payroll system. But what may be going on is that the organization has just bought a whole bunch of smaller companies and they're going to have this huge influx of employees, so it's a scale problem. Or maybe it's just really expensive to maintain it and they want to retire the old infrastructure and throw everything up into the cloud. Okay. Or maybe it's an interfacing problem, so they want to uh, break out the, database, the data in the database and they want to open it up and so they can have access through microservices. Or maybe there's just a foundational problem here where they really want to solidify the foundation of the product so they can build new functionality on top of it. If you understand these, then you understand what's the real priority for the organization. So if you happen to have any good ideas, you make sure that they align with those. You can learn about what the ultimate goal of the modernization project is probably from your product owner, and we'll talk about that uh, in a minute. Now, as I mentioned before, you might be asked to be pulling metrics here. And most likely, it's to pull metrics that are going to measure how well the organization is meeting its goal, how well this uh, modernization project is, is helping the organization. This gives you a clue, again, as to what is important to the organization and your client. And you can get this information from the product owner. And if you don't have access to the product owner, that's fine. You actually may have access to the business analyst. And again, they will give you that insight um, into what's important to the company that you're working with. And there's a quid, quid pro quo here, because they are going to rely on you 
to make sure that whatever the modernized version is that's been designed is actually technically feasible. So they're relying on you, you rely on them to actually understand the business context for this project. So step two, let's find out what the business problems are that the application itself is solving. So clunky or not, the application solves a business problem. So you may understand the process that the application is, is going through, but you also need to understand the business problem that the application solves. So what does the application allow the end user to do? What drove the organization to throw thousands and thousands of dollars at this, process, at this uh, application, and now they're spending thousands and thousands of dollars more to modernize it? What are they getting out of it? What's the problem that they're trying to solve? And then how does that tie to the organization's new mission? Again, they made the leap to modernize this application. They probably have a new uh, uh, mission or goal that they're trying to achieve. So what's the connection there? And so we know what this is. This is the, uh, uh, the dullest people mover at the airport. The problem was you got people coming to the arrival building, but you got to get them to all the gates surrounded, surrounding on the fields, right? So they have the people movers. Well, the problem is now we have more people doing travel and more people doing air travel. And so what's the solution? Bigger, faster people movers. Or you may turn around and say, you know, no, maybe you should actually build an underground metro. So step three, uh, let's talk about the end user. How is it really going for them? And this is really key here. It's one thing to understand the client's perspective. What's the organizational mission? What's the business process? What's the problems that they're trying to solve? But you really need to also get into the heads of the users. What are their pain points? And what are the workarounds that they do every day that upper management has no clue about? And what part of the application, what part of this dashboard kills them? And what do they have to deal with every day? So how do you learn about this? You become friends with the user experience team, the UX folks. And you take part in the UX uh, exercises. So as a UX lead, one of our really uh, lucky abilities is to be able to pull in software engineers to take part in the exercises that we do with our users. So you learn the first hand, or you learn firsthand how the users deal with the application, what trips them up, and what solutions can you come up with that will solve the business problem but also help the user. So you may learn about a UX issue based on the exercises that you partake in. And what if you aligned that with the tech solution that you're thinking about here? And what if that aligned with the organizational goal? Goal. You now actually have a beeline to bringing real value to your client. So you're a savvy engineer, right? You're up to date. You know the new technologies. You know how to solve a lot of the problems with the user interaction. So let me uh, show you something I had to deal with recently. So why did it have to take us? six clicks to, do a, to get to a drop down to make a simple choice? And why were we just inundated with input fields? And why were the fonts so damn tiny? Why did we have to shove everything into one screen? So well, I appeal to you here as savvy engineers. You know the technical solutions. Maybe some animation would have solved some of the problems or some pro progressive reveal here. If you are able to help the UX team help solve the user problems, then the ideas that you bring to the table, again, they bring real value uh, to the organization. So the thing is with the client, they only see really one solution. It's the same way they did it last time. They don't understand the real challenges that the user runs into, and that's where you can come in and really have that extra insight here. So you add it all up, you have the technical know-how that you have, and you understand the UX problems and you understand the business problems. This is when you can start thinking about ways to be much more innovative that brings much more value and at the end of the day is way more interesting. So let's pull it all together here. You have to get in tight with your product owner. 
you have to get in tight with your business analysts and your UX team. Like I said, it's a quid pro quo here. They rely on you. You should get the insight that you're looking for from them. So we're talking about the organizational goals here, like I said. If you understand the ultimate goals that the, uh, that the client is trying to achieve, you'll be in the front line for knowing if the modernized version is actually going to achieve those organizational goals. You'll be the one to be able to smartly say, is there an alternative solution to really bring value here? Number two is the business problem. If you understand the business problem that the application helps you, the user solve, then you'll recognize that the legacy application took an outdated approach to solving the problem, and maybe you have a much better way of doing it. You can question the constraints that the application was built under back in the day and find other ways to achieve those or to surpass those, and you'll spot the opportunities for using new technologies to streamline the process. Again, it's not how I fix this one function, it's how are we going to improve the entire business process. And then finally, just understanding the user needs. If you, understand what the, if you understand what the users are trying to do and you understand what trips them up, then you'll know whether the technical approach that you take is gonna make a difference. So I want you all to be the heroes here. Um, like I said, the ideas are a dime a dozen. We're not looking for flaming logos here. Um, we know the Henry Ford story. Had he gone out and asked people before he built the Model A, what do you want, they would have said faster horses. But he recognized the fact that you know, there are much bigger problems here, and he also had the technical know-how. And that's really the confluence that I'm talking about for you all. So we want to understand uh, the idea that we're looking for ideas that are going to make a difference. Uh, and we know, you know when we're going to keep our mouths open and when we're going to keep our ideas to ourselves whether or not they align with what we're talking about here. So, align the ideas that you bring to the table with the organizational mission, with the process, the business process that's trying to be solved, and the, uh, the UX work uh, that the, uh, the team has been doing. And the client will be more apt to take on the ideas that you bring to the table, and they may even expand the scope, because what you're bringing to the table is so valuable to them, and that's what we're looking for. What's that value? that you can add. So it's no longer lift and shift. It's actual innovation with a purpose. It brings value to everyone who's working on this project. And it makes a difference for you getting up in the morning and driving to work. So thank you very much. I'm Stuart Ridgway.